Hello YouTube, welcome back to Nutkin Farm. I'm up near the top of Block 6 overlooking the valley that uh, has a creek and uh, up to the other side of my farm and um, it's a pretty sight on a winter's day. Winter here in the Northern Rivers is fairly stable, there's not a lot of rain and the temperatures in the daytime can get to the low 20s, uh, the lows can get down to about 7 or 8 at night and uh, low 20s if you're watching this in a Fahrenheit country means about 70 odd degrees Fahrenheit. It's good temperature for working, um, lovely temperature for just walking around and of course it's harvest season as well. And in May or towards the end of May, June is what you would call mid-season for macadamia harvesting. So nearly everyone will have done one pickup at least, probably more. Uh, and in this weather, you know, the pickups have been delayed by the rain. But uh, the mid-season pickups are really, for the most farmers, meant to be the, the biggest. But it's not always the case. You know, this, this year I'm not having a great year with my 344s. They've dropped what they're going to drop and that hasn't been much. Um, but it does raise the question in terms of weather conditions and everything else is that um, macadamia varieties do drop at different times of the season and if you're planting a macadamia orchard or even if you're looking at buying a macadamia orchard it's important to take into account when those crops are going to drop for you um, it you know you don't want to get a harvester out here um, just for a small part of the farm because that's inefficient. You get charged generally if you're using contractors, you're getting charged for the float. That is the cost of bringing the harvester to the farm and of course the setup costs and everything else which are all charged to you pretty much at an hourly rate, sometimes up to about 150 bucks an hour. So it's convenient on one level for all your crop to drop at the same time, but there are other factors involved as well. Um, what you're seeing in front of you here uh, is the base of my 660 trees where there's a lot of small nuts ready to be picked up. Um, 660 is an early dropping tree but then if we go down the hill towards our A16s down the base um, they're all still on the tree and not a single nut has dropped. So for my first harvest pickup, I told my harvester, look, don't worry about those lower rows. You're not going to get anything. Spend your time on the upper rows. But what's best, early or late dropping varieties? And I can contain the discussion to the northern rivers of New South Wales, but, you know, there are similar discussions to be had wherever you can grow macadamias. Um, we class varieties of tree as early dropping, mid-season mid dropping, and late dropping. And that's, you know, fair enough classification. Early dropping, we're talking about March, April. Um, mid-season, May, June, July. Um, late season, a bit of an overlap would be sort of June, July, August, sometimes even September. And... Um, here's an example of an A4, uh, A16, um, sorry. All its nuts still on the tree, and oh, there's one or two on the ground now, which you kind of expect because A16s do tend to start their drop in late May, but it can keep on going till August. So I suppose that we break down the discussion. One part of the question is well, which varieties do drop late? Um, and then, is that a good thing compared to those that drop early? The early dropping varieties um, in the Northern Rivers, uh, the common ones are 741, 660. Um, they're, the, they're the earliest standout dropping varieties. Um, there are some rarer ones. Um, I'm trialling the 835, which is um, reportedly the earliest dropping macadamia you can get. Um, they drop in March and they're pretty much done by the end of March. So they're the early droppers. The mid-season, uh, 344 starts early, but, but 344 has a long dropping range. It can be early, it can go all the way through to August, at least by last year's experience on my orchard. The um, mid-season varieties are the mainstay 246, 
Um, the 816 is mid-season. The A4 starts in the mid-season, A268. They're sort of mid-season dropping varieties. So, yeah, you'd find them starting to really hit their stride about now. And that's a large bulk of nuts in the northern rivers. Um, you'd be harvesting those in May and June. Late dropping varieties. A16 is the popular one, or popular in terms of widely planted, um, variety that drops much later, towards July, August. Um, there are people sometimes picking up A16s as late as September. But what about the new varieties that are fashionable, that are getting so much traction? And I, I believe I touched on this in another video, but it's worth repeating. The new varieties that the CSIRO have brought out and recommend to growers are all late dropping, every single one of them. Um, G is probably the closest to mid-season, but R, P and J are all late dropping. Their peaks are in July um, and they, they tail off into August. And, um, you know, so if you're planting only those new varieties, you're going to have a late dropping orchard. MCT1, which hasn't been involved with the CSIRO, that's been brought out by the Macadamia Conservation Trust after a long period of development. It's a descendant of A4 and it drops very late, um, quite late indeed. You know, it's a July August dropper of, you know, heavy crops of large nuts. So is the industry tending towards late varieties and is that a good thing? Well, there are pluses and minuses. For early dropping crops, the plus is the trees are basically clean by June. You don't need to do any more harvest rounds by then. And if you've got things you want to do like pruning or, you know, limb work on the trees, you can do that then before next season's flowering and you actually won't get in the way of the next season's crop. There's a distinct period between those two where you can actually get a whole lot of work done. That's a good thing. Also, early dropping nuts, and, and bear in mind the nuts all sort of form in spring, regardless of when they're dropping. They all, falls, they all form in late spring, uh, early summer. Early dropping nuts are less susceptible to um, fruit spotting bug, rat attack, um, other fungal diseases that come through, husk spot in particular. The longer the nut stays on a tree, obviously, the more time it has to be attacked by these um, pests. And so an early dropping crop largely gets rid of that. So there are one or two sort of species, like even 741, you know, it can get a bit of husk spot, but you don't really need to worry much about husk spot in the 741 because the nuts will be down before it can really affect much of them. On the other hand, for things like the A16, which is also very husk spot susceptible, um, you've got to spray or else you could lose substantial amounts of crop. So the early dropping variety is, is good on those levels. Where it's bad is, is really to do with the weather. In the northern rivers, the harvests can be absolutely crueled by rain and by the fact that grass is still growing reasonably actively in an orchard. And what you're looking at here is an area that had to be basically reherbicided in order to uh, in order to expose these nuts uh, on the ground um, that's how fast the grass grows so the harvesting conditions in autumn in the northern rivers are in general pretty poor um, and you can often be interrupted by rain or if you've got a slightly sloping terrain like i do um, the harvesting equipment can go for a bit of a slide and it becomes a bit of a a bit of an occupational health issue so that's the early crop. The late crop, well, it's sort of the reverse of that. You're harvesting in the northern rivers when the weather is the best. It's dry weather. The grass stays down. After each harvest pickup, you don't need to do too much grass control or mowing in order to keep the, um, keep the um, undersides of the trees 
behaving nicely and you often um, as a result of these later drops you're often getting larger higher kernel recovery nuts so you know the 849 for example that's a direct descendant of the mid-season dropping 246 but it drops very late usually although there's some reports of it dropping early this year in response to all the rain those nuts can often give you a higher price for that kernel recovery and they're often larger kernels as well because they've had longer to develop in the shell a, a longer time for nut sizing um, so it's good for harvesting it's good for getting the crop in and it's probably good for your price what it's bad for is that you're often harvesting right when the next season's flowering is about to open and you can run into some collision courses one if you want to do any pruning you're going to have to do it probably post flowering which isn't a, you know it's not a it's not a deal breaker you can do it but it's not as good as doing it before the flowering gets underway and two when it comes to pesticide spraying you've got to protect the flower against lace bug and the sprays that you use for lace bug do in general have a withholding period on nuts that you're harvesting and so you can run into timetable clashes between spraying for the pre-emergent pests and actually harvesting the previous season's crop so it um and and you know it becomes you know also in august you want to lay down your first fertilizer as well usually and trucks bringing fertilizer along your rows well their tires can often run in to the ground the nuts that uh, you're you're trying to harvest so you know you don't want to do your fertilizer run until a harvest pickup's done so more time scheduling issues for later crops but generally better conditions in which to do the harvesting work you need to do is it fashionable to be late well nowadays yes all the new recommended varieties are late droppers what do you do if you are looking at a farm that has an existing stock of early dropping trees what do you do with them well if you're planting a new block you could consider having a late dropping block to counter the early one and try and spread your risks there you don't necessarily want to be alternating rows of early and late dropping trees because that gets quite inefficient um, you don't want to have to rip up all your early dropping trees and replace them with late ones but there's you know there's a couple of there's a couple of options for you one one is you can wait for uh, David Bell's new variety from Hidden Valley Plantations the A367 I think it is um, which is a new variety that performs very well apparently but drops early to mid season um, if you're buying a farm which is advertised as having a wide variety the important thing is to ask a real estate agent or an agronomist well what's the mix of varieties where are they and can it be sort of done efficiently in terms of harvesting you want to know that before you buy a place don't uh, don't just stop it looking at green macadamia trees and saying well this looks all right and uh, crop numbers as well you've got to take harvesting uh, costs into account particularly if you're not doing it yourself so um i've tossed it up and you know asked myself the question well gosh you know if i was to wipe the slate sl wipe the slate clean and start tomorrow what would i be looking for and ideally i think i'd like the midpoint i'd like mid-season droppers um but my second choice i think would be late season um simply because on the kind of landscape we're looking at on Nutkin Farm, um, the harvesting conditions become very, very important to getting your job done. And harvesting conditions are better in around July, August than they are in March, April. It's a bit of an individual decision and um, you know you need to plan a farm to take into account your own preferences. Also, when you buy a farm, if it looks like it's a rehab job, if it looks like there are old H2s and 344s, um, you have to bear in mind that those are early droppers. And if you replace them with late droppers, you may be fixing one problem, but causing yourself um, another smaller problem in terms of 
spreading your resources and using them efficiently. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. I will come back to you again with another video soon and give you an update on things generally.